a message I wish I'd never heard. You know those times you really just wish you'd never rolled out of bed? Or the times you really just didn't want or knew you shouldn't do something, but you go and do it anyway? Yeah, I'm living that right now. For you to understand what I'm about to tell you, I need to begin from the start. Namely, and chiefly, who I am. So here goes. My name is Amanda Sinclair, and this is the day I died. I worked for a top secret organization within NASA. We were tasked to sift through the files and drama that they either wanted quietly hidden, buried, or doctored. But before any of that could happen, the claims had to be either substantiated or verified, so as to not alarm the general public. God only knows what they're thinking about now or probably even witnessing, all while I hide here, deep within this bunker, for what little good that will do me. In all honesty, I think this bunker will buy me maybe one or two extra weeks, if I'm really lucky, a third, before the resources start to become depleted and the air quality starts to turn. Who knows, perhaps the devastation will be over and I'll emerge from the wreckage like Eve, looking to restart the human race again. Who am I kidding? Though, I'm not an angel, not in the literal sense, more like an angel of death, or a herald here to warn of the great destroyer that comes before us all. If anything, I don't deserve to live. If there is any small mercy, this bunker will collapse in on itself, and I'll be buried alive. But perhaps even that small act will be forsaken for me. So, how this all started. My role here was to watch out for strange or interesting transmissions being beamed to our planet. And while, as I've already mentioned, checking and verifying any information that NASA received or wanted altered again, to protect the people, because honestly, if they had truly seen half the things we'd had to alter, hide, or debunk, there would be anarchy, and the population would be in uproar. This is why the decision for our forefathers to withhold until Ready Mantra was put in place, and to be completely honest, I don't think mankind, as it is today, would ever truly be ready for such a revelation. Last Monday, I'd arrived for work in a jovial mood. My sister had just gotten engaged and we'd spent the weekend celebrating. Needless to say, I was still feeling the effects that morning and well into the afternoon, and the copious amounts of coffee was doing nothing to help aid or alleviate the situation. So, it had been during the early brief session that I was tasked with looking into a rather curious case which had arrived in that weekend and required my immediate attention. Apparently, the Green Bank Observatory out in West Virginia had been taking a closer look at the Make Make, a dwarf planetoid out beyond Pluto, when they intercepted a rather strange signal one that had never before been recorded since a wow signal. Obviously, our agency had to step in before word leaked out to the press and wild theories started running rampant. So I dutifully set about retracing the very steps that had led to this new discovery. At first, it was boring, drawing through the endless reams of nonsensical data and background noise that could so easily be explained away without the need for ourselves to get involved. That was until early afternoon, when I was just finishing my lunch while working at my station, that I heard the faint signal, dim at first before pulsing like a crescendo of an opera or orchestra upon reaching the climax and ending with aplomb. 
without wasting any more time than had already been allotted, I summoned over the shift leader, who in turn also took a listen to the signal before informing the director of the best course of action to now take. Ultimately, the call was to identify, analyze, and if possible, decode the message before a final verdict was reached. In doing so, this was to be given top priority. All other projects were to be put on hold, and the team would be dispatched to retrieve all data from Green Bank and be withheld until after the affair had been resolved. As I sat programming the most sophisticated computer to work with me on decoding this transmission, I couldn't help but get weak at the knees, while the butterflies in the stomach filled a pit so large it could swallow the entire continental United States and still have room left over. Not to mention, I was getting more than a little apprehensive about what the message could be. Days passed, and still it seemed like me and the computer were getting no closer to solving the mystery, and I could see that the supervisors were becoming more than a little restless, almost as if they themselves were being put under pressure for answers from whomever they answered to. Then it happened on the Friday evening, just as things were all coming to a head. The computer made a breakthrough, and it found a way to crack a section of the code, enough to begin forming a basic algorithm in unlocking the message. Rather than retire for the evening, I decided to stay and work on the code, while the computer attempted to make more headway into the rest of the message. The more I worked on the code, the more I became entranced. This was an alien message, something that meant first contact was within our reach, and here I was, trying to solve it, and ultimately end up either not seeing the fruits of my labor, or having my work being disavowed and ordered to never speak on such matters ever again. I knew I was breaking every protocol, and possibly end up losing my job, but this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a chance to expand the borders of humanity. I thought mistakenly we'd be prepared for that. These visitors would come in peace. It seemed in all honesty peace was never in the, the option from the start. This message was nothing more than a probe, seeing if anyone would respond. As I ran the hastily built algorithm, the small amount of code it became as followed. We are waiting. We are here. With the computer's help, we managed to sink in with one of the many satellite relay dishes that pointed in the direction the Green Bank Observatory had on that fateful night been using. What time we had, we delivered a message to be broadcast out towards the signal's point of origin and hoped our visitors would get the message. Feeling I could do no more and still waiting on the computer to crack the rest of the code, I retired to one of the bunk rooms within the facility with renewed vigor and determination to see if our friends would re send a reply. Today, I was awoken by the heavy footfall of armed security pulling me out of the bunk room ordering me to the control room and to the director's office. At first, I thought someone must have traced the message I'd sent back out into, into space. Then, as I was hauled past the control room, the look of my colleagues gave me all the evidence I needed to know, as up on the big screen that dominated the control nerve center, the computer had finished decoding the full transmission, which was now being displayed across the entire screen. My heart was in my mouth. The message I received wasn't a thoughtful request of asking or trying to seek out a new civilization. It was a demand of surrender. As I looked at the message in full, surrender your world, resources, and population, for we will wait no longer. We are coming, was the entirety, my algorithm had got the decoded part wrong. Had I, 
have fully and correctly got the message in full, I would dare not have responded. I would have left well alone. But now, as I looked out on the satellites focusing towards the moon, a huge creature with tentacle-like feelers ripped and shredded all eyes and ears we had in the sky. And I knew in that instant I had doomed my very planet and its people. And all I could think of was that this was a message I wish I'd never heard.